So what's file system implementation? So we're all familiar with directories and files, right? So we will learn in this chapter how the system, the file system, which is a subsystem of the operating system, how it uh, maps these file directories and files into your physical blocks on the disk. Or in other words, how does it implement this? It, you know, it looks like, for us, it looks like you know, we have a directory structure, we have a bunch of folders or directories, and in each directory there are files, and the file will look like a, a you know, a text, whether it's a text file or a code file, it will look like a contiguous, uh, contiguous piece of data or code. Uh, but as we will see, the actual implementation of a file is just like the implementation of memory. You know, we can think of the file as, uh, you know, logically the file consists of multiple blocks. You, you don't see these blocks as a as a user or even as a programmer. The, the file is a file for you. But the file system is going to divide this file into blocks. The size of the block is typically 512 bytes. And it's going to map these blocks into sectors on the disk. So this is going to get mapped into sector So, you know, this could get mapped into, you know, sector 7, and this could get mapped into sector 101. Right. So, just like memory management, uh, logically, the file here is a contiguous sequence of blocks, but physically on the disk, these blocks can be scattered all over the disk. They don't have to be contiguous and they don't have to be in order. Right? So mapping blocks into sectors is just like mapping pages into frames in, the, in memory management. Okay. And in, in file system implementation, one of the important data structures is the, is the file control block. We'll see more details about this uh, later uh, today. Uh, so the file control block is just a block, a data structure that the operating system keeps, or the file system in particular keeps, uh, to store information about each file. Okay. And the device driver is another important component. The device driver is that part of the operating system that talks to the hardware, okay. that controls the hardware. So, a file system is typically organized in layers. <coughs> of course, every file system is different. But this is sort of a generic uh, organization of a typical file system, or it's something that is common to most file systems. They are organized in layers. So, the, the bottom layer is the low-level layer that talks to the hardware, which is the... Uh, well, uh, this is the devices, the, the actual device, the hardware. By the way, when we say devices or device in the context of file systems, what kind of device are we referring to? What's the device that we're talking about in file systems? The device that we're talking about here is the disk. So the I.O. control layer is the layer that controls the hardware. And there is, on top of that, the basic file system. On top of that, the file organization module. On top of that, the logical file system. And on top of that, we have the application. <coughs> now, in the next slide, we will see what each one of these means. And we will go bottom up. So we'll go from the lowest level to the highest level. So the lowest level is the I.O. control, which is the, you know, the device drivers. Uh, this is the, uh, the lowest uh, level layer that talks to the hardware. And this layer receives commands like read from drive one with a cylinder number, track number, and sector number. So this is the address on disk. The address on disk, you first specify the drive number, you know, that because you may have multiple drives. 
and within each drive you have a cylinder number, track number, and sector number. Okay. Now this layer will translate these into low-level commands that are machine specific or that are device specific, not machine specific. There are device specific commands that will uh, will access that particular uh, sector. Okay. On top of that, there is the the basic file system layer it, that uh, that re receives requests for physical blocks, like you know block number one twenty three. So block one twenty three in this layer will get translated into uh, drive number, cylinder number, track number, and section uh, sector number, and this command will be sent to the uh, I/O control layer. Uh, and this layer will also have the buffering, the buffers that will buffer data that will get transferred between disk and memory. Now, on top of that, there is the file organization layer. Now. You may have noticed that in layers, in the I.O. control and the basic file system layers, we don't have the notion of a file. So these layers don't know about files. They know about blocks. Okay. Now this layer knows about files. So this layer is going to translate logical blocks into physical blocks. So now what do we mean by a logical block here? A logical block is like you know block number five in file XYZ. So block 5 in file XYZ will be, for example, block you know, 123. So block 5 in file XYZ is will get mapped to some physical block number. And the command will be sent to the lower uh, layer. Okay? Now the layer on top of this, the logical file system layer, so this is basically the directory level layer. So the previous layer was uh, the file level layer. On top of the file level, you have the directory level because the directory consists of multiple files. Okay? So it's, uh, you know, this layer, uh, you know, manages directories. It will have the directory structure. And in, in the directory structure, as we will see, there is, a, uh, there is an entry for each file. And there is a, a file control block for each file. So this is above the file level. So these are the, uh, these are the different layers. You know, this layer also has directory management and protection and file access. Uh, file access uh, privileges and all of those things at the directory level. These are the things that we're familiar with when we use uh, file systems. Uh, this slide just gives some examples of file systems and it shows that uh, one operating system may have multiple file systems. Like Windows, for example, has FAT, the FAT file system, and the NTFS. Okay. Uh, and people are still coming up with new file systems, so new file systems are getting, uh, you know, are still arriving, uh, like the Google file system. So file systems, uh, we have a lot more file systems than operating systems. You know, an operating system, we don't, have, we don't get new operating systems very often. You know, even a new operating system like Android is not a totally new operating system. It's based on Linux. So it's not a brand new uh, operating system. It's, uh, it's, a mobile, it's a mobile version of uh, Linux. That's what Android is. So it's uh, five systems. We only have a limited number of, uh, sorry, a limited number of operating systems, but we have a lot more file systems. And you know the file system is just a, uh, a subsystem of the operating system. Now, the implementation of a file system in uh, the file system has data structures on disk and data structures in memory. 
So on this, there's, there are data structures that are kept on this and data structures that are kept in memory. So on disk, there is the boot control block, for example, per volume. So this has information about how to, to boot an operating system. If that volume has an operating system, if it's a bootable volume, and we know that we can have a, a volume can be bootable or unbootable, depending on whether it has an operating system or not. So if there is no operating system, this block is going to be empty. Uh, there is the volume control block. For each volume, there is a block that has information about the number of blocks, the number of free blocks, the block size. Uh, it also has the directory structure. Uh, it, it also has the directory structure. Uh, sorry, the, sorry, the directory structure is another thing. So volume control blocks, and there is the directory structure which is one directory structure for a whole file system. And what, what the directory structure has, it, uh, you know, the directory structure has the, the file names or uh, you know, the directories and the file names within each directory. And for each file, there is a file control block. What's in the file control block? In the file control block, the information that the file system tags for each file, including uh, the permissions, uh, the dates, when the file was created, when was the last modification, the owner of the file, the size of the file, and pointers to the actual data blocks. The file control block doesn't have the actual data. It's just a header. It has the information about the file, and it has pointers to the actual data blocks that constitute that file. Now, what does the file system have in memory? The file system has in memory, memory, the mount table. So the mount table has the, will have the different drives that are mounted or the different volumes that are mounted to that file system. Uh, it will have in memory uh, the a cache of the directories that have been accessed recent. So, you can have a whole directory structure. Uh, and it doesn't make sense that you load information about all directories in memory. Because typically, you know, if you have a one terabyte drive, it has lots of directories and lots of files. And it doesn't make sense to load information about all of them in memory. What you need in memory is the, uh, is loading information about the Directories that have been accessed recently. So it's some kind. It's uh, it's caching. It's caching the uh, frequently accessed directories in memory. There is a system-wide open file table, and there is a process-wide or per process uh, open file table. What's the open file table? It's a table that has information about the open files. The system-wide table has a copy of the file control block for every open file. The pair process open file table will have a pointer to the corresponding system wide. So why is that? Because a file may be opened by multiple processes. So if you have a certain file that is open by multiple processes, so this is the system wide, table. So the file control block, file control block for say file X will be in the system one table. Now if you have two processes, process one and process two, that have this file open, each one of them will have an entry in its pair process table, and they will just point, both point, to the file control block for that file in the system-wide open file table. So in other words, you don't have to have a copy of the file control block for each process, So there, because there could be multiple processes opening that file. Okay. 
And there are uh, you know, buffers that the system uses to buffer the transfer of data between disk and uh, memory. So let's look at these pictures that will show what happens when a file is open, when we open a file. Uh, so when we open a file, this is the directory structure in memory. So this is user space, this is memory, of course, kernel memory. So these are kernel data structures. And this is the disk. Now, if uh, an application uh, re, you know, makes a system call to open a file, you know, assuming that you know, the directory entry for that file is in the directory structure, it will get used. Of course, if it's not there, it will get loaded, right? So if, the, if that directory is cached in memory, it will get accessed. If it's not cached in memory, the system is going to load it from disk. So it's going to load that information for that directory into the directory structure if it's not already there. And then it will look up you know, that file name within that directory. So the directory will recognize file names. And each file has a corresponding number. So like if the directory has 100 uh, files, these files will have numbers from 1 to 100. But you are sending a request for a name. So it will map the name into a number. And it will go to, uh, you know, if it's file number 17 in that directory, it will, uh, it will go to the file control block for file 17. OK? Now, when, uh, when you read from a file, now when you read from a file, you will need to access the actual data blocks. So now, when this file gets open, there will be the file control block for that file will get cached into the system-wide open file table. So the file control block will be in the system-wide uh, open file table. And the per process open file table will have a pointer to that. OK? And that file control block for that file will have the pointers to the actual data blocks. OK? So that's, this just shows us how you know, things, uh, you know, what the file system has on disk and what it has in memory. So basically, it, it caches the things that are accessed in memory. Anything that gets accessed gets cached into memory. But it definitely you know, doesn't load everything on disk into memory. There is no reason and there is no room for it. Now, since we talked about you know, the directory, the directory entry, we, we give it a file name and it gives us a, the corresponding a file number, how is that implemented? Well, the directory could be implemented as a linear list, but then the search will be slow. So uh, you can sort that list alphabetically by file name, and then you can do binary search for a, a given file name within a directory. So the search that we're talking about here is searching for a file name within a directory. Okay, and. Another way of doing this is using a hash table uh, for, uh, you know, for implementing a directory so to speed up the search.